Creatine is one of the most popular supplements out there today. But should you be taking it? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Jillian Poles, and I am a researcher at NYU Lincoln Health. But before I got to this point, I got my bachelor's and my master's in exercise physiology. I was an American College of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer for three years. And now I'm a competitive power lifter. I'm also a long-term creatine taker, but don't let my allegiance fool you. I'm about to deliver an unbiased rundown of the science behind what creatine is and how it works so that you can decide for yourself whether or not it's worth supplementing. So what exactly is creatine other than this mystical white powder that's supposed to make you stronger? Creatine is a naturally occurring compound in animal skeletal muscle. And it helps us generate our main form of energy, known as ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Creatine in the muscle is often found attached to a high-energy phosphate group. And this combination is known as phosphocreatine or creatine phosphate. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos in preparation for this one because I wanted to identify what information may be missing that would help an individual understand what creatine does. And so I'm going to go a little bit into the science of bioenergetics. Please don't next the video out. I promise I'll try to make it interesting and understandable. So what I think a lot of videos neglect to explain is the fact that there is a hierarchy of energy systems. As we go from top to bottom of this hierarchy, not only will the amount of ATP that we can produce change, but more importantly, we are going to produce that ATP more and more slowly. So all the way at the top, we have our phosphocreatine system. That high energy phosphate really allowed us to produce a lot of ATP in a very short amount of time. Next in the list is our anaerobic glycolysis. Produces a little ATP, but it's pretty fast. And then finally, we have our aerobic glycolysis. And this is the slowest, but it does produce a lot of ATP. An example of something that would utilize creatine phosphate system, again, is powerlifting or a very short sprint. Anaerobic glycolysis is something like a 400 meter or 800 meter dash and probably some heavy weight lifting. And then your aerobic system is going to be more things like marathon running or high rep weight lifting, whatever you want to say. And what I should explain is that these systems don't run in absolute. One of them isn't always the only system that is working at a given time. So we can have the anaerobic system going, but the aerobic system is still helping us to produce ATP in the background. Or you can have primarily the phosphocreatine system, and then maybe your anaerobic system is helping out in the background. And your aerobic system is on a little too. So call me biased, but I think a great example of when we would use this phosphocreatine system is powerlifting. In powerlifting, we are constantly training to increase our one rep max, otherwise known as the maximum amount of exercise we can perform for one repetition of either squat, bench, or deadlift. But we're not training to our one rep max every day, and that I think would be a little taxing for the body. What we do is we perform sub-maximal loads at varying rep ranges. For a big lift like a squat, I'm performing five sets every day. And I predict I'll run out of my creatine supply maybe within the first two or three. In that example, I have still two sets left to perform. And so if I'm someone who's not supplementing creatine, I will probably drop down to that anaerobic system mainly being my source of energy, which is all well and good, but it's not as good as my phosphocreatine system. And that is where creatine supplementation would come in handy. I have more creatine in my muscles, so I likely won't run out until the fourth or fifth, which allows me to sustain a higher intensity performance for a longer period of time. But I have to emphasize that creatine is not used as a substrate for any of the other systems, not the anaerobic system, not the aerobic system. I'm going to take a very bold stance here. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say this, but I do believe it's true. In terms of direct performance gains, direct, I need to emphasize direct. If you're not someone who's performing very, very high intensity exercise for repeated bouts, um, creatine supplementation probably will not have direct effects on your performance. But that doesn't mean that there's no benefit. Let's talk about it. 
So I think the biggest draw that we find for creatine supplementation is that it's repeatedly been found in randomized controlled trials to increase lean muscle mass. So while this hypertrophy isn't a direct effect on performance, individuals with lean muscle mass can often produce a higher amount of power. It's just a fact of the matter that increased cross-sectional area of muscle is associated with an increased power output by that muscle. So this often means that individuals who are exercising and taking creatine can find performance benefits, even if they're not a power lifter or Usain Bolt. In fact, in 2017, a very reputable group known as the International Society of Sports Nutrition published their stance on creatine supplementation in exercise, sports, and nutrition. So in this publication, they stated, Studies have consistently shown that creatine supplementation increases intramuscular creatine concentrations, which may help explain the observed improvements in high-intensity exercise performance, leading to greater training adaptation. In addition to athletic and exercise improvement, research has shown that creatine supplementation may enhance post-exercise recovery, injury prevention, thermoregulation, rehabilitation, and concussion and or spinal cord neuroprotection. These studies provide a large body of evidence that creatine can not only improve exercise performance, but can play a role in preventing and or reducing the severity of injury, enhancing rehabilitation from injuries, and helping athletes tolerate heavy training. So there we have it. Like I just explained, the direct performance gains found from creatine supplementation are going to be for individuals performing very high intensity exercise. However, sounds to me like creatine supplementation can benefit pretty much anyone performing any exercise, which is the good thing. These studies show that short and long-term supplementation up to 30 grams a day for five years is safe and well-tolerated in healthy individuals and in a number of patient populations ranging from infants to the elderly. Moreover, significant health benefits may be provided by ensuring habitual low dietary creatine ingestion, for example, three grams a day throughout the lifespan. So not only is creatine effective, but it's completely safe. So now that I may have convinced you to start taking creatine, let's talk about some other things that you should be aware of. So the first thing is that you must tell your doctor that you are supplementing creatine. The reason why is when they perform urinalysis, they look for something called creatinine in your urine. Creatinine is a normal product of the breakdown of creatine. So therefore, it stands to reason that when you're supplementing creatine, you're breaking down more creatine, and therefore your creatinine levels will be higher. An abnormally high creatinine level is usually indicative of kidney damage. However, if you're supplementing creatine, it's pretty normal. So we have to make sure that our doctor knows that our kidneys are not failing. So the second thing that I think you should know is that creatine naturally draws water into smooth muscle. So you may see a bit of weight gain at the beginning that is not attributed to lean muscle gain. This usually evens out in the long term, so it's nothing to worry about. But smooth muscle doesn't just refer to our skeletal muscle, those muscles that we're working out. There's also smooth muscle in our gastrointestinal system. As a result, you might expect some GI irritation as a result of additional water being drawn in. But this tends to also resolve itself pretty quickly, so also nothing to worry about. So now let's talk about exactly how to supplement creatine. Number one, let's talk about which form of creatine you should be taking. By far, the most recommended will be creatine monohydrate. And this is because it's been found to be the safest. It's been found to be just as effective, if not more effective than other forms. And finally, it is the cheapest. Save your money on supplements by taking creatine monohydrate. So now let's discuss exactly how much creatine you should be taking. The ISSN said that three grams per day is effective. Anywhere from three to five is usually good. If you're on the upper end of body weight, uh, I would take five. Or you can dose based on body weight. Uh, so the recommendation is 0 0.1 grams per day per kilogram of body weight. So just find your body weight in kilograms. You can, if you're in the U.S., divide pounds by 2.2. 2. 
and then multiply that resulting number by 0.1 and uh, you should be in the clear. The next debate around creatine is whether or not a loading phase is necessary. So a loading phase is where you take a lot to begin with so you can really saturate your muscle quickly. Then you taper down to your three to five gram per day dose. So for example, a loading phase can look like 20 grams per day for two weeks. That's what I did. GI irritation is definitely a bigger concern at that point. Take my word for it. Um, so if you're someone who isn't really in a rush to see those results, you can just take three to five grams per day the whole way through. It just might take a little longer for your muscle to saturate with creatine, which is what is necessary to see the effects that we want. Up to you. The next question may be, do I have to take it every day? So since we know that if we take three to five grams per day, our muscle will eventually saturate no matter what. No, it's not life or death to take it every day. However, I would recommend it if you think about it, only taking it on like lifting days is honestly harder to remember and you just risk this unsaturation and saturation and etc. Those kind of models I think are just unhelpful. I would recommend just taking it every day to make sure that your muscles are always saturated in preparation for a training session. And finally, some people wonder if timing matters. When should I take this? I'd say if it does matter, the effect is minuscule. Take it whenever you need within the day. It doesn't have to be pre-workout, although if that helps you remember, power to you. I personally like to just put it in my water in the morning every day. That way I don't forget. So hopefully this video provided you with some unique insight on whether you can benefit from creatine supplementation. Hopefully I covered everything that you might want to know, but if not, feel free to comment any questions and I am happy to answer them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see similar content, feel free to subscribe to the Ruba Health YouTube channel and or stay tuned for the Rupa Health Root Medicine Podcast.